Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Chromog on normal and heroic difficulty in the Blackrock Foundry. And as we said in our beta video, this boss is fucking awesome. Oh yeah. And now that he hasn't really got that many bugs anymore, it's even better. Yeah, this, it is a really, really good yeah, fight. Yeah, just a big hand to Blizzard on this fight. They've done a great job. Now for this encounter, you do want to bring two tanks, 10 man setup, you want to bring about three healers and 30 man, you probably want to bring maybe five or six healers and a mixture of range and melee DPS is good and anyone who has really, really strong cleave, there is a part of the fight where that will become very, very useful. Now this encounter itself is just pretty much one boss, there's nothing else really going on. There's a couple of adds that you need to deal with later on in the fight, but we'll talk about them when we get to them. But to start off, let's get some of the boring shit out of the way, let's talk about everything that the tanks need to deal with. Now the boss will apply a tank debuff called Warped Armor. This reduces your movement speed by 15% and increases the amount of physical damage that you take by 20%. And this stacks pretty quickly. You need to taunt on roughly two or three stacks. Another ability that Chromog will do is something called Fists of Stone. This pretty much empowers a melee attack every now and then to make it so that it will do a large amount of damage to the tank and anyone within 15 yards of that tank. And it is actually split damage. This pretty much means that your tanks do need to be on top of each other throughout the entire encounter to split up this big damage. And because of this, we make sure that our tanks are stood on the right-hand side of the boss, all on their own, and then we have all the melee on the left-hand side of the boss just so they don't get any parries or anything like that. Now, some of the more interesting abilities that you need to deal with one is Slam. This does a large amount of physical damage to the entire raid, but the closer you're stood to the boss, the more damage you take from this ability. So when this ability comes in, if you can run away from the boss without losing too much damage or healing, that will help out because it will reduce the amount of damage that you take. Now this isn't necessarily that important for melee because it generally does it does hit melee more hard but it's not that important. It's mainly to do with the tanks who have the warped armor stacks. Because you do take a shit ton more physical damage, while we was actually clearing this for the first time, we did find our tanks got one shot every now and then and it was just yeah. out of the blue. So if the tanks can run away and then run back very, very quickly, that will help out a lot. And make sure you do return to the boss very quickly because otherwise you'll turn around and slap your melee in the face. Because, Which is bad. Yeah, it's very, very bad. So just run away away and run back as soon as you possibly can. Another ability that will do AoE damage to your raid is Stone Breath, but this won't do physical damage, it just does ticking nature damage over about a two or three second period. Nothing you can really do about this apart from maybe use Aura Mastery, but you don't want to use this for every single one. We'll talk about cooldowns in a minute, all you need to do is just heal it up. Another ability that will do AoE damage to your raid is something called Rippling Smash, however this one you can completely avoid. The boss will face towards a random player and then will smash his fist on the ground, sending out a shockwave that deals nature damage to any players that are hit. Now the animation itself of the boss sort of like smashing his fist on the ground is really sort of poor. You kind of need to get used to it because at first it doesn't look like he's facing towards you. Don't look at his arms, look at where his like chest is faced and that's the best way to see exactly where the shockwave is going to land. Now the actual animation of the shockwave coming towards you is pretty fucking terrifying. It looks like it's coming towards yeah. you at the speed of light, but really it's actually pretty slow. It's kind of crawling towards you. It's because there's a shit ton of particle effects like kind of in front of it, showing you where the shockwave is going to be. Just move from it. You have plenty of time, especially if you're quite far away from the boss as well. You should be absolutely fine. Now on top of the shockwave effect, you'll also get a load of reverberation disc spawn that will start to travel from Chromog towards the back of the room and once they reach the back of the room they'll just flat out despawn however if they hit a player as they travel through the room that will also cause them to despawn but they will also deal damage at the same time to that player which is obviously a bad thing it actually does far more damage than you think as well it actually does quite a nasty spike to those players and if you combo that with like other abilities such as stone breath or slam you can look at people dying in very like small time periods so just avoid it it's bad and the last ability that you'll need to be dealing with on top of all of these other abilities is probably one of the most cool looking abilities that he has, which is Rune of the Crushing Earth. Now a red like rune circle will appear under a ranged player's feet and a hand will spawn either side of it. Now when the two of these runes have spawned, the hands will then activate and slam together, stunning anyone in between and dealing a huge amount of nature damage. Don't stand between the hands that look like they're going to clap and clap on your face and probably kill you because yeah. that's what they're going to do, um, strangely enough. Yeah. It's, it's, it does look very cool, but it's very, very easy to avoid. So yeah, don't stand between the ominous looking hands. Now at certain times, intervals throughout the fight the boss will enter sort of a new phase I, I guess you could call it a phase where he'll do an ability called rune of the grasping earth now when the boss casts this he'll spawn yellow runes on the ground that every single player in the entire raid needs to go and stand under 
A few seconds after they've been activated, a hand will appear out of the ground and will grapple the player that's stood inside the room. One thing to note about these hands is that they can only grab one player, and that's why you need to put one player in each room. If you have two players in a room, only one of them will be gripped, which is a really bad thing. Because while you're in the hand, you will be taking progressively higher and higher nature damage, which obviously isn't good, but you are completely immune to all physical damage. As in everything. Which is very, very important for his next ability that he casts very shortly after these hands have become active, which is Thundering Blows. This is a fairly long channel where he will just constantly slam his hands on the ground, and if you're not in one of these little clawed up rune hands, you'll be sent flying into the air about 100 yards and take a huge amount of ticking physical damage. So even if you manage to like kind of mitigate the physical damage of being like of the actual ability, you're probably going to die from the fall as well. Yeah. So the idea is, is that you get inside of one of these hands so you'll completely avoid being knocked up in the air and taking a huge amount of physical damage. However, while you are in these hands, as I said, you will be taking more and more nature damage, so you can't stand in these hands forever. So as soon as the boss actually starts his Thundering Blows cast, you want to start damaging your hands down so you can get people out as soon as you possibly can. And most importantly, you want to get out your tank first, because if no one's within melee range of the boss after the Thundering Blows is finished, the boss will just start spamming Stone Breath over the entire raid, which will kill you off anyway. So you want to free your tanks first, and then free everyone up as soon as you possibly can, and then the fight will just go back as normal. Now, some important things you need to worry about with these hands that spawn under the ground is that when they do activate, don't go crazy and kill them, because you can kill them off before he's even finished casting Thundering Blows. So not only will you get out your hand, then you'll just get knocked up anyway. Yeah. So not only have you nicked a hand, you've just killed yourself as well. So make sure that you kind of time your DPS so that you kill the hands just as the thundering blows has ended. Very, very important. Now, if you do have a very large raid group, you may actually need to assign where you want people to be standing in these runes because there are only a certain amount that are available. Because we have the melee group on the left hand side, we actually allocate all of the little yellow runes to those melee so they don't have to run all the way across the fucking room to try and find one of the runes. They can just go to the ones that are closest to them. We then have the healers take the ones in the middle so they can actually get range on every single player because of course you can't move while you're inside one of these hands. It's best that you have the healers in the middle so they actually can AoE heal everyone. And then we have the ranged and the tanks on the right hand side because not only that's where the tanks is, you kind of just throw in the ranged away from the melee and the healers really just make sure that you do get everyone out before you do return to the boss and you should have no issues with this mechanic so after you've gone sort of through this first phase and then you've dealt with the hands and then you go back to deal with the boss like you did right from the very very start of the encounter you'll notice that the stone breath and the slam start to come in very quick succession of each other and this is really where you want to use healing cooldowns every time one of these is followed up by another it can drop your rate to very low percentages. And if you combo that with a disc from a rippling smash that someone accidentally ate or anything like that, people will end up dying. So every time you do get this crossover point, especially if you're in a large raid and have lots of CDs available, just CD every single one. But don't go overkill, don't blow lots on every single one. Just one on each will probably be fine. You want to repeat what you've already done, dealing with all the mechanics and dealing with the hands until you get the boss to 30% and then he'll go into a frenzy. In this frenzy, it'll actually increase his damage and attack speed by 20%, and he'll just use all the abilities that we've already listed much more frequently than he would before. So at this point, it's probably a good idea to save Bloodlust if you wanted to. We personally didn't because, of course, Bloodlust on the pool, big deeps. But yeah. if you did need to, if you are struggling on Chrome Mog because of this frenzy phase, you can always save Bloodlust for this. But generally, this boss hasn't got a huge Titan Rage timer, so it probably is safer to saving it for the frenzy. Yeah. But it's kind of up to you it, whenever you want to use and it. And also saving fine. your larger healing cooldowns or damage reductions. Yeah is probably a good idea for this phase. This is probably the best time to use them. But overall, that's really it for the encounter. It's not too difficult, yeah, really, and it's it is, quite repetitive. It is very repetitive. The main thing is just dealing with the hands, and you could argue that with less players, it's a lot easier to deal with because you can actually assign people where to stand, and the runes themselves always spawn in the exact same location. So after a couple of pulls, you'll, you'll get used to, right, that spot in the room is mine. <laughs> no one else is going to fucking take it. That's always mine. And everyone gets into that mindset once they've eventually found that little spot in the room. But yeah, it's, it's very repetitive. Nonetheless, it's a fucking amazing fight. And it's definitely one of my favorites in here so far. But thank you very much for watching, guys. If this guide did help you out, then make sure you do leave us a like. It helps us out a lot. As well as if you want to see any of our other Black Rock Foundry guides, then make sure you click up on the annotations you see on your screen now. And that'll take you straight to those videos.
Thanks for watching. Thank you.